Hey everybody, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. Exposure. That is the basic and the foundation of everything that you're going to do in photography. Every one of the images that you create requires an exposure. Now, there's two methods of, of working with this. Either you know it or you don't. If you don't know it, you're probably in a program mode or an aperture or a shutter priority just because your friend told you that that's how you need to be shooting and you're getting decent results. But if you know it, then you know how to set your settings and you can actually, you just know it, you can do it and you know, not without even thinking about it. So let's go over all those components since th this is the foundation. You need to know this. This is something that if you want your photographs to get better, start here and know this, know it well, know it backwards and forwards, like the back of your hand and whatever, something a saying that I can't think of right now. <laughs> so you need to know this, all right? Got to know it. First, ISO is the sensitivity of your sensor or of the film. Back in the day, you used to buy or speed, uh, rolls of film, and those rolls were either ISO 100, 200, 400, 800 rolls of film, and you would shoot that entire roll. And so it's the same thing, it's still that same sensitivity. And there are our primary sens uh, settings right there. Then we have the shutter speed, which is the amount of time that the, ex the, the shutter is open and the amount of time that you're actually gathering light. All right, so that shutter opens and closes, allowing light to pass and actually hit that shutter. Last one is the aperture or the amount of light. On the inside of your lens, there's a diaphragm, and that diaphragm opens and closes, all right, depending upon how much light you're letting in. So, what we have created here is what's called the exposure triangle. I should have written that in the middle, huh? Uh, the exposure triangle. One is always going to affect the other. So, in other words, if in order to get a proper exposure, and, but I want to say change my aperture to f4, all right, I'm going to need to either change my shutter speed or my ISO. So all three of them need to go together all the time, all right? So that's the first part, and we'll get into the next right now. All right, so we have our triangle. One is affecting one part. It's also affecting another part and might affect the other part. How does that work? Well these are our primary settings up here we have 2.8 in our f-stops f4 5 6 8 11 16 22 32 those are our primary f-stops all right what those are telling us is that when we go from f2.8 to f4 we're having the amount of light then when we go from f4 to f5.6 we're having it again so we're cutting it in half every time we do one of these major stops all the way down the scale and going the other way, we're doubling the amount of light. So when we go from F11 to F8, that means we're doubling the amount of light. And then again, when we go from F8 to 5.6, we're doubling it again. Shutter speeds work the exact same way in our primary, uh, primary settings, from 1 15th of a second all the way to 1 2,000th of a second, and uh, some cameras will even go up to 1 8,000th of a second, maybe even higher. I think my D3 and D3S go up to uh, one eight thousandth of a second. I don't think they go any higher. So um, those are our primary shutter speeds. Once again, this is simple time. One fifteenth of a second, one thirtieth of a second, one sixtieth of a second, one one twenty-fifth of a second. We're decreasing the amount of time that the, the image can be created in. And then inversely, we're uh, increasing it. Uh, increasing the, the, the time and then increasing the amount of light going this way and then decreasing going that way. ISO, we already talked about that. 100, 400, 800, 1600, all the way up. And my D3S goes all the way up to 102,000 ISO, which is another two stops on top of that 2,500, sorry, 25,600. And so you're, once again, you're doubling every time you go up. All right. So uh, let's work with that a little bit. I'll give you some uh, good examples of how you need to think about it and how to apply it. So we know about the settings and how they work together, that they're one stop back and forth, okay? One stop or double or half the amount of light. 
So what is an f-stop? How does it affect the image itself? Well, the number one way an f-stop besides adding or removing is depth of field. Say this is your camera and excuse my absolutely horrible drawings. <laughs> this is your camera and right here is your subject. There he is, stick figure. And you're taking a picture of him. Now, if I'm at f32 and I'm focused right on him, I'm probably going to have a depth of field from about here to here. Maybe a little less in the front. Probably from there to there. Okay, so we're going to have almost everything in focus. But if I'm shooting at, say, f4, my depth of field might only be from there to there. Okay, what happens with focus is you have, if you're focused right on the subject, one third of your focus is in front and two thirds are in the back. Now, what happens is when you're rotating your camera, that pl what's called the plane of focus is actually parallel. It's actually parallel to the camera. So as you turn the camera, your plane of focus is also going to change. All right. So that's where we get our depth of field. Now it's a little screwy. It maybe it might be hard to understand. 2.8 is going to let in the most amount of light. All right. F32 is going to let in the least amount of light. But F32 gives us the most depth of field. Say we're shooting a landscape, we have everything in focus at f32. But at f2.8, we have a very shallow depth of field, so the things in the background are very blurry, and typically that allows you to, you would isolate whatever it is in the background, get rid of it so that it's blurry, so that it brings the viewer's focus onto the portrait, onto whatever it is in the foreground, uh, the primary whatever it is in the image at that 2.8 or f4 setting. So that's how the f-stops works. Uh, shutter speeds next. Shutter speeds, and it's just it's just an amount of time. That's all this really is. 1 15th, 1 30th, 1 60th of a second. Now, 1 60th is typically the slowest you want to be hand-holding your camera for two reasons. Uh, number one, camera shake. Uh, you can't really hold the camera, especially not a beginner, can't hold the camera, and I can't even do it without actually concentrating and uh, being sure that my breathing is accurate and all that stuff, uh, below 1 60th of a second. All right. Um, number two, the subject is moving. If they're moving, then you're not going to have a fo in focus and sharp picture, and to me, it's junk. If it's not sharp, it's a junk picture, and I'm not even going to show it to a client, I'm not going to show it to a friend it gets deleted in no time. Uh, then we go all the way up to one two thousandths of a second. Now that's going to stop action. All right. So as you're moving something moving really, really fast, you need a really fast shutter speed. So that's all you got to think about it. If you need more exposure, you just do more time. But if your subject is moving really fast, you bring up your shutter speed higher in order to stop that motion. Real easy. Last thing I forgot to talk about with ISO is you always want to try and keep it as low as possible. All right. When I say as low as possible, that's not sacrificing anything aesthetically in the image. All right. If you need to have your shutter speed high in order to stop motion, that's more important than keeping a low shutter speed. All right. If you want a stopped action photograph, you have to increase your shutter and you're probably going to end up increasing your ISO. That's just the way it is. So camera manufacturers know what they're doing. So don't go and just start underexposing your pictures all the time just because, oh man, I'm worried about my ISO being real high. They know what they're doing. They know how to get a great image. They've done all the testing. They're engineers. They're really smart people. So they know how to get that perfect exposure, the least amount of noise, least amount of everything. So you've got to get that good exposure. All right. Speaking of exposure, let's talk about how this works. Say on a program mode, we're going to shoot a portrait and the camera is telling us that we should be shooting it at F11, 1 1 25th at ISO 800, all right? And that's on a program mode. 
those settings wouldn't be very good for most of my portraits in the way that I shoot them, but they might be great for someone else. But I want to switch it. You know, I want to change it up. I want a very shallow depth of field. That f11 isn't going to give me a very shallow depth of field. All right, so I want my f-stop to be 2.8. All right, so that's four stops difference. Eight, one, two, three, four to f2.8. It means we've got to do some changing here. All right, first thing we always do, change our ISO. All right, minimum ISO whenever possible. So two of those stops from 800 down to 100, I can get by just change bringing my ISO down. All right, so this is plus four stops. And so we're going to bring this down to IS, oops, ISO 100. So we still have two more stops that were overexposed. And by the way, not only is the camera in program mode telling us this, also the meter in the camera, whether we're in manual, whether we're in aperture priority, well, priorities don't really matter. Uh, I suggest most people shoot in manual because you have a better connection with the camera, a better connection with what you're doing, and you, you, know, you really start to understand it. So manual is the way to go. Uh, anyway, last thing, we still have two more stops we need to get back, and we're going to raise our shutter speed. All right, we're going to go from 1 to 2 50th to 1 500th of a second. Okay, now we still have the same exposure go as this is, the same amount of light. It's just I've set the settings how I want them to be in order to get a much better composition in the final image. And that's always the goal. That's why you need to know this stuff because you can control everything about your image. If you need that high uh, ISO to create something funky, you know how to change it and you know how to make everything work with it. If you're shooting sports, you know you need a high shutter speed and so you're going to be up around 500 or 1000 or 2 thousandths of a second. But if you want a very shallow depth of field, if you're shooting portraits and you want to isolate them from the background, that's when you need to set your f-stop. To me, in my mind, I'm always kind of shooting in a, in a what's a, uh, I'm trying to remember what the word is, aperture priority uh, kind of mode in my mind. So since I'm doing that, um, I'm thinking about that first because that to me is the main thing that's controlling the image or those two, that f-stop and that shutter speed. All right, so keep on working at it. Watch this video a bunch of times. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. If I did, let me know in the comments. Thanks, thanks a lot for watching. Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com.